So moving on to draining the cooling system from a Citroen DS, first thing to do is to take the cap off. And the next point is you have two drain points. One is a tap at the bottom of the radiator here. On this radiator, it's on the side. On the later radiator, it's on the rear, which is slightly more awkward. And you've also got a drain under the exhaust manifold, which is in the side of the block. So depending on the radiator, the tap is either on the side, like it is on here, or it's on the back of the radiator down on this side, slightly more awkward to get at. Either way, um, the, when you open the tap, you will drain it out of, uh, out of the hole in the bottom, and ideally you want a, a longer pipe than is fitted, or you might not have any pipe at all. Might need a longer pipe than that in order to take it out to an external tank or whatever you're going to drain it into. Uh, and the trick here is to use a small spanner. This is a six mil spanner. And just with that on, it makes it easy to undo the tap. You can try pliers, but it's very easy to bend these tangs. I'll just nip that one up again. So moving on to the plug in the bottom of the block. Okay, so what I'm going to demonstrate here is just the drain plug for the coolant on the block. Difficult, that's the plug here. It's a spark plug side socket, 21 mil AF, and it could be quite tight, so I'm using a breaker bar. Just break, crack it off. Undo the plug and let the water coolant come out. You've seen where the drain plug is and I'm going to show you how you can get access to it. Given that we've already taken the wing off this car and it's left hand drive, you can just get in. I have a long extension with my spark plug socket on the end of the wobbly bar. And I can just about see it. And finagle the socket on and now I can crack it off. But you can see from the angle that this is all very awkward. With a right hand drive car it's even more awkward and you really have to take the steering column out and have the wing off before you can get any kind of access. Because once you've taken it off of course, it's all very well taken off, but you've got to put it back in again and the only way to do that is with ha by hand. I'm not actually going to take this drain plug out in this instance because we've just recently drained the, the coolant, but it also has a copper washer on it which needs to be either renewed or annealed so it seals properly when you put it back in. When you drain the coolant out, you'll need a large tray underneath to catch, the, catch it because it tends to dribble everywhere underneath the car. And uh, if you're doing this on axle stands, of course, as I say, I need a large tray which you'll be able to catch and therefore environmentally dispose of because it is toxic. So you need to remember that when you're disposing of it. As for replacing your coolant, once you've drained it all out, you want to start off by putting in concentrate, and I would suggest you want to put in at least six litres of concentrate and top up the rest with water, ideally distilled water. And ethanol and glycol was fitted uh, from the factory, so I would suggest you use that stuff. Point noting is that uh, ethylene glycol is good for two years, as it usually says on all the cans, because that is the length of time that the corrosion inhibitor works and which stops your uh, cylinder head corroding with the water that's in the coolant. The antifreeze uh, inhibitor will last much longer, but it's the anti-corrosion issue which is why uh, they recommend that you change your coolant every two years.